James Watt's workshop was built in the roof of his house Heathfield uh, in, in Handsworth in Birmingham. And originally this, this place up in the roof was used as a storeroom and then gradually it became more of a sort of an active workspace. Now when Watt died in 1819, no one went in the workshop until at least 1848. In the early 1850s, VIP started to go in there. And then gradually from the 1860s, more and more people started to go inside. Part of this sort of myth making that happens around Watt posthumously. Finally, in 1924, everyone's aware of the workshop having been there. It's in pretty poor condition. Heathfield is going to be demolished. Today, it's, a, it's actually a, you know, a housing estate. You wouldn't even know it had been there. And it's only in 1924 that finally a decision is made that the Science Museum should acquire this complete room. And the whole place is dismantled just after Christmas in 1924. It comes to the Science Museum and it's been on display pretty much all the way through from 1924 until, until now. The workshop is this a quite remarkable survival. It's a, a mixture of a sort of personal museum. It's a physical record of Watt's work, uh, starting out as a scientific instrument maker in the 1750s, right through to his final live project, which is copying sculpture. In a way, it's a sort of repository of memories and also of projects past. There's eight and a half thousand objects in there and they, they reflect a complete physical picture of his entire working life and interests. It's a, an amazing array and actually one which I think is unparalleled anywhere. On one hand, it has a lot of stuff which is from early in his life. All sorts of things in unfinished or semi-finished you know, semi form. Lots of the basic raw materials, lots of brass, lots of lenses which he'd buy in bulk in these boxes and that sort of thing. The workshop tells us an awful lot about how what worked and what he was like as a man. It looks like organised chaos when you first go in there, then you realise gradually that there is actually some sort of order and things have been put in particular places in particular ways. So for example, in one place you've got big mass purchases of chemicals and then you've got sort of smaller quantities of them put into, carefully put into jars. Things are in particular places for, for, for particular reasons. What comes across from that is that what could be meticulous there are also, as well as these sort of working projects, there's quite a bit of personal stuff in the workshop. One of Watt's sons, Gregory, he died, I think he was about age 24, he died of consumption. And then actually what you've got in the workshop is a complete uh, a chest full of uh, Gregory's uh, notebooks and school books and that sort of thing, obviously brought up and placed there after the event as a sort of, as a sort of memento mori. So, as well as being a practical workshop, it's also a place where, which actually says a lot about what and some of the other things that happened in life. It wasn't always terribly happy. The part of the workshop which I like most is the fact that you've got a, a guy who's best known as a steam engineer and all these other things, uh, devoting so much of his time to sculpture. And so he builds a pair of machines in the workshop which are for copying sculpture. One makes equal sized copies, the other one makes small, smaller sized ones. And what's very interesting about these is that firstly you had Watt who's in a way been a little bit diffident, suddenly multiplying copies of, of images of himself in a way he's almost like memorialising himself just before the Victorians start to do that. That people like Watt, these engineers, were not just engineers in the, the modern sense of it, engineer with a capital E and we just do engineering. What represents that much wider range, that, that, that almost the lost world of, of artisanship. The interesting thing that comes across from Watt's workshop is just the, the capability to take an idea and take it through a development process and turn it into an actual product. The ability, the strategic ability, which Britain's Industrial Revolution, our, our emergence as the first industrial nation, depends on. Watt and his workshop represents that uh, very rich background which was evolving in Britain, probably uniquely so at that time. In a way, it was the hinge upon which we swung into the modern age. And that's worth remembering. <laughs>